So it looks like you guys really enjoyed the last video I did about mods, and you all wanted to see some level mods. I found a bunch of levels for you guys, but while making this video, I realized it was going to be extremely long. I even split it up into two parts, and they still were going to be really long. Like, I'm talking 30 to 40 minute long videos. There's really a lot to talk about, so I decided I'm just gonna, you know, make this a whole series. Not a big deal. Today I'll show you guys some Mario levels and save some of the other levels I have for future videos. This also means I have a ton of Hat in Time content coming soon. And just in case you didn't know, I'm playing the Steam version of this game which supports in-game modding. And also note that none of the levels that I'm playing or any of the other mods in this video were created by me. I'm simply putting together some of my favorite stuff that I found and putting it together in a video. I will be crediting the creators on the screen as the mods show up and also the links to these mods will be in the description so check that out. So without further ado, let's get into some levels! I really need an official intro. Alright, so remember in the last video when I showed off the Cappy Hat mod? Wouldn't it be really neat to see a level designed around the Cappy Hat mechanics? Introducing the Cappy Jump Rift! This is a level specifically made for the Cappy Hat that I showed off last time. This level serves as a tutorial to using the Cappy Hat. I thought it pretty much self-taught all the stuff you could do with Cappy, but this level did teach me some new tricks. After going into the first teleporter and completing all the easier jumps, the game will teach you that you can use the speed momentum that you gain after doing a perfect boost dive thing and get some huge distance. Alright, so I genuinely hate criticizing these kind of things because people work so hard on this stuff for free, but I do have a few nitpicks with this level. I think this is a good level, but it has some things that may have been overlooked when designing it. When you start the level and go inside the teleporter, you'll be greeted with a wall and a couple of signs. On the left, the sign says, Normal Hat. Jump, kick, jump. Okay, so it's pretty much just telling you how to get past the first wall. So after you get up onto the first wall, all of a sudden you're warped to the next section. Which is a little confusing, but once you see that there's only one sign here, then you'll know you correctly completed the first section. Next sign says, Cappy Hat. Jump, jump, throw. Jump, jump, step on. Kick, jump. Alright, so equip Cappy, and jump, jump, throw, jump, jump, step on, kick, jump, cool. Teleport it again. This next area looks confusingly like the last area, but once you read this next sign, you realize that you made it to the next section. This time the hat says, high jump, 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 throw, jump, jump, step on, throw, jump, jump, kick, step on, jump, throw, hold, wall, step on, kick, jump. You see where this is going, right? Okay, so... Jump, jump, throw. Jump, jump, step on, throw, jump... Jump? Wait, hang on a minute. Jump, jump, throw. Jump, jump, step on, throw. Jump, jump, hold wall. Lick wall. Kiss wall. Be the wall. Jump, 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 throw, jump, jump, throw. Okay, you get the point here. These instructions are not clear. I don't know what the creator is asking me to do, but I got on top of the wall like this. Jump, jump, throw, jump, jump, step on, kick, jump, throw, step on, kick, jump, profit. Either there's another way to make this jump, or that sign is lying to me because those instructions did not match what I did. The signs don't get any better from here on out either. And what makes this situation worse is the whole teleporting thing. The game will reset you every time you do something that the creator doesn't want you to do. It happens throughout the entire level. I appreciate the quick restart when I mess up, but it also resets you when you do something in a way that was not intended by the level designer. And when you combine that with unclear instructions, things get a little annoying. There usually isn't any clear indicator of when I'm going to be reset for doing something the wrong way. And then there was the one part where I needed to go back to collect the pond that I missed, but I couldn't go back because of the whole reset thing. How would Mr. Rossetti feel about this? I was able to find a way around this, but a player should not have to feel locked to play a level a certain way. I'm pretty sure there are other ways to restrict a player that are less annoying. For example, instead of being reset for not throwing Cappy to collect this pond here, put a glass wall or a gate or something in the way. Cappy can go through those things on the way back to the player. This prevents the player from being confused as well as feel less restrained. Anyhow, those are my only nitpicks really. After getting past these issues and continuing with the level, I had a good time. The level finishes off by using everything you've learned and putting all your skills to the test with a race. 
The goal is to get to the last platform before the time runs out. This last challenge is actually pretty difficult, but I enjoyed it. There's no confusing instructions or any reset teleporting, unless you fall off the platform of course, or run out of time, which is fine. <laughs> After finishing the race, you may go into this teleporter which throws you into the beginning area. Literally, it actually throws you into the beginning area. And congratulations! You have completed the Cappy Jump Rift. Again, I don't hate this level. I actually thought I had some pretty good challenges and utilized Cappy to his full potential. Hat Kid honestly uses Cappy better than Mario. Hey, I wonder if these cones have physics. Are you kidding me? Next, we have a blast from the past. ba -bomb Battlefield. This mod basically just rips the map and puts it in the game. All the textures and stuff are the same, but it's actually really neat seeing all this running on the Unreal Engine. So you start off this mod just like in the N64 game, and there's even the two friendly red bomb bombs here at the start. The one near the cannon will open the cannons for you, and you can use these cannons. Be careful blasting off too high though, as you will take fall damage. <laughs> There is no Koopa the Quick here, but there are Goombas and bob -bombs scattered throughout the level. Goombas act how you would expect, except I'm pretty sure they're just a tad faster. If bob -bombs chase you though, you better run for your life because they're a bit tricky to avoid. I mean, it's not the most difficult thing in the world, but they can catch you if you're not paying attention. You can pick them up and throw them, but they won't explode after ground impact. Instead, They'll just keep on chasing you, so the best thing to do is run. Your red bob -bomb friend here will warn you about the water bombs that are present in the level, but in this version of bob -bomb Battlefield, they're nowhere to be found. You can find that huge chain chomp here, and it will attack you, so seriously, run. Also, the fact that you can hardly get two good ground pounds in before it decides to chomp you feels all too familiar. And when you do free him, you get granted a star! I mean, a timepiece! Very anticlimactic, might I add. You just free him and away, and away he goes! Then the gate opens with your reward. You may now acquire your well-earned timepiece as your new big chain chomp pal is now free to rain terror upon many innocent lives. Seriously, has anyone ever considered what happens after you let this thing loose? It even attacks you as you're trying to free it. It's obviously hostile. So remember those tree stumps you could run around in Super Mario 64 to get coins? Well, if you run around them in here, you'll notice something fascinating happens. You have to keep running around them though. Once you've ran around a tree stump enough times, you'll notice that nothing happens. There is also a timepiece for collecting the eight red coins. You can climb the mountain and dodge all the cannonballs that roll at you, but there is no big bob -bomb up here. The two small caves on the side of the mountain are there, and you can in fact use them to warp. The flower patch warp is not here, however. There is another bob -bomb battlefield that does include the flower patch warp, but it doesn't stay as true to the original design as the other one does. This one takes some creative liberties such as replacing Mario enemies with the Hat and Time enemies, like the Mafia and the Crows. Also, some of these crows just straight up jet at you, like, yo, what the heck? Chill out, bird brain. There is no big chain chomp anymore. Instead, the mod will ask you to destroy some of these giant apples for a timepiece. Big bob -bomb isn't here either, but you do have this group of crows that act as a singular boss. Yeah, you can take these birds out for another timepiece. Um, hi. This is a post-editing message here to tell you that I found a glitch. So if you take damage at the same time you go through the teleporter, this happens. Hat Kid is stuck in this animation, and she looks a little uncomfortable. Someone, send help. And if you don't know where to find her, just look for the girl that can always be seen in front of things. You can't miss her. This actually makes for some pretty fun images. Looks like Mafia got tattoo of little girl. That Mafia impression took me about 20 tries, so I hope you appreciate that. You can dance to undo the glitch. Oh, uh, wait, never mind. She just goes back to glitching. But yeah, I just wanted to throw this in here. Hat Kid still needs help, though, so... Um, you know what? Whoever gets 20 likes on their comments gets to save her butt. Y'all know what to do. Alright, let's look at some more mods. 
So the time rift sections in the game bear an obvious resemblance to the Super Mario Sunshine secret levels. Gears for Breakfast wasn't even trying to hide the fact that some of these sections are heavily inspired by Super Mario Sunshine. So of course, level designers would recreate some of these sections in a hat in time, right? Spoiler alert! These next few levels are Super Mario Sunshine secret level recreations. First we have Rico Harbor Secret, which is a pretty accurate recreation from what I can tell. The background is strangely closer to the foreground than anything, and makes things seem a little bit claustrophobic. It's also dark in some places, and there's this weird shadow glitching going on with some of the platforms, but whatever, it's cool. I actually like that it's dark. In combination with the Hat and Time's modern assets, it makes the level feel like it's an old level, yet modernized. It's akin to revisiting Shadow Moses in Metal Gear Solid 4. It feels sort of like it's been around for a long time, abandoned, and forgotten. I'm thinking way too much into this, aren't I? The next one is called Super Mario Sunshine Secret Level, which is based off of the secret of the Dirty Lake. This level is kind of, sort of an accurate recreation, but throws in a few curveballs. For example, the red and blue platforms here are placed just like the original design, but these red platforms are slanted for whatever reason. The clouds show up here as you ride this block, but the block looks like another dimension or something. The level is probably easier than the original due to a hat in time's physics. These platforms at the end are definitely not the same, but they spin fast, so uh... I like these better. These last two riffs are actually based off of the same level, the Shell Secret from Noki Noki Bay. This first one is a pretty accurate recreation, and I had a lot of fun playing through this because it naturally works with Hat Kid's movement. In fact, I'd say this is probably one of the levels in Sunshine that worked best with Hat Kid's movement. And also look at that, you even have nails here, and they're not smashed in, but you can smash them in. But if you want a level that uses a little bit more creative freedom, try this level. I especially like this section in the middle of the level that asks you to do a wall jump to get onto the platform above. Then you have to collect this palm by doing another wall jump and going on top of this wall. It's funny what changing just a few key details does to a level. The level looks entirely different. This looks and plays just like it belongs in a hat in time. Actually both of these levels look and feel like they belong in a hat in time. I would say if you're looking for some decent a hat in time levels to play, check out some of these sunshine levels. You would think that since these levels weren't designed for a hat in time, they would feel pretty generic, but nah. I would say these levels work great in a hat in time. There is one more level to show you guys, Delfino Airstrip. This level takes the airstrip and places enemies and obstacles within it. It's pretty much just a ripped map just like Babam Battlefield. I was always impressed with the water in Super Mario Sunshine, but in this level they really stepped it up a notch. The water is so clear, it almost looks non-existent. I swear you could just drink off of this water, no filtration required. So there are a few details to note here, like the crows scattered around the airstrip. Just like... what are these things actually? I don't even know what they are. Are they like tropical Goomba or something? Also, these fish missile things act like the fish enemies in Sunshine. The main objective in this level is to activate the red coins and collect them all before the time runs out. It's really not that hard. I messed up a few times and I was still able to collect them all. I like seeing mods like this. It's pretty neat. Simple, but neat. I like seeing stuff from other games used in games they don't belong in. Anyway guys, that's it for the Mario levels. Thank you so much for watching. I know the levels in this video were just reusing assets from other games, but like I said earlier, I have a ton of more levels to show off. In fact, just to name a few things that I have planned for future videos, I plan on talking about levels that people have designed from the ground up. These are brand new levels that were born out of the creativity of fans. I've downloaded both short levels and long levels with multiple objectives that I think would be really neat to show you guys. I also want to make a follow up video to my previous mod video, since you guys were very informative in the comments section, I'd like to talk about some of the things you guys were telling me. I also plan on doing other modded games, like Super Smash Bros. and Breath of the Wild. If you enjoyed this video, then hitting that like button and sharing with a friend really goes a long way in helping this channel. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Have a blessed day.